In this lesson, we're going to look at heating and cooling curves. Before we do so, let's define two types of energy. One type is potential energy, which you might see the symbol PE for potential energy. And that's the capacity to do work because of the position or condition that you're in. Um, in chemistry, a lot of times it's going to be talked about the energy that's held in bonds is considered to be potential energy. This these bonds are capable of eventually releasing some of this energy to do work. Um, or if you're talking about a ball on the top of the hill, it would have potential energy. Or we also might talk in terms of phase. Um, a gas has more potential to do energy than a solid. Kinetic energy, given the symbol Ke, is the energy that something has because it's in motion. So motion would be kinetic energy, potential energy because of your position or condition. So let's get to our heating curve. A heating curve has temperature on the y-axis and time, typically time, sometimes it might have heat on the x-axis. And it should see a curve something like this if it's the full heating curve. So if you think about it, what phase are you typically at very low, low temperatures? Solid, right? So what would happen is you would start with a solid and as you add heat or energy to that solid, slowly the temperature of that solid would go up and up and up. So that's what's happening here with this single phase of a solid. Eventually, if you add enough heat, what's going to happen to that solid? It's going to start changing to a liquid. It's going to start to melt. And that's what's happening here. What you'll notice is when it's melting, this is when it's turning from solid into liquid. So I'd have both solid and liquid in, in my container as it's melting is the temperature is staying constant. If I were to go across here, I could actually get a melting point temperature. So if this had actual numbers, I could find the melting point for that substance. Another name for melting is actually called fusion. So as I add more heat when it's melting, um, that heat is not going into changing the temperature, it's going into changing the phase. It's pulling apart the solid molecules into liquid molecules, which are a little bit further apart, which have um, a little less forces of attraction between them. Once it's completely a liquid, then as I add more heat, the temperature rises again. So this line corresponds to a single phase of a liquid. And the temperature will start to rise and rise and rise again until it starts to boil at which point the temperature remains constant during the phase change as my liquid is changing into gas. I would have both liquid and gas in my container along this line as the liquid is changing into gas. And if I actually were to go across and find a temperature, I could get the boiling point temperature. Another name for boiling is vaporization. And once it's fully a gas, as I add more heat to it, the temperature can once again rise. Okay. Um, all the phase changes that um, are kind of associated with going up this graph, so solid to liquid, liquid to gas, um, those are all endothermic phase changes, meaning that energy is absorbed when doing so. And it makes sense if you're boiling a pot of water on the stove, you're adding heat to change it from liquid to gas. Any phase changes that would involve phases um, kind of going down this curve would be exothermic phase changes, meaning that energy would be released. So going from a gas to a liquid would actually release energy. Liquid to a solid would actually release energy. So you can kind of use your heating curve to figure out if a phase change is endo or exothermic. Going Anything going up overall would be endo, solid to gas, solid to liquid, liquid to gas. Anything going down would be exo, gas to liquid, liquid to solid, gas to solid. Okay. Um, we can also talk about what's happening to the different types of energy along this heating curve. So anytime the temperature is going up, your particles are moving faster, so your kinetic energy goes up. Temperature is directly related to kinetic energy. So anytime you have a temperature increase, kinetic energy goes up. Temperature is actually the measure of average kinetic energy. That's the definition of it. Potential energy is changing when you have your phase changes on the flat line. Kinetic energy is not changing because the temperature is constant. So whenever the temperature is constant, kinetic energy would be constant. All your energy is not making the particles move faster. It's breaking apart the intermolecular forces between them. So it's changing the condition or the potential energy. Okay, so why does the temperature stay constant as heat is added during a phase change? All of the heat is being used to break the IMFs, the intermolecular forces holding the material together in the solid or liquid phase. So it's changing the potential energy, not the kinetic energy. 
Why does the temperature rise as heat is added when only one phase is present? Because all of the heat is being used to make the particles move faster, and that's what changes the kinetic energy. Instead of a heating curve, you might see a cooling curve, which is the opposite. You're starting at higher temperatures and cooling it down to lower temperatures. So what phase would I start with at a very, very high temperature? That would be a gas. And over time, as I remove heat, it would be cooling down and cooling down until it reaches back to what was the boiling point. This would still be at the same temperature. I could still call it the boiling point, but it's a different phase change because it's going from gas to liquid. We can call that condensation. It's actually an exothermic phase change because I'm going down. Okay, and again, the temperature stays constant whenever there's a phase change, whenever I have two phases present in my container. Once that gas has fully turned into a liquid at the end of this line, now as I remove heat, the temperature can drop again when I have my single phase. So notice I have single phases on the diagonals, and I have two phases or phase changes present on the flat line. And that will continue to decrease in temperature until it reaches back to the melting point. Um, if I wanted to call it, I could also call it the freezing point, but it would be at the same temperature that melting takes place. It's just a different direction. So rather than going from solid to liquid, it's going from liquid to solid. Um, and I could go across and find the temperature if I want to there. Um, so these are actually happening at the same temperatures as my heating curve. It's just a different direction. Um, so that's why even for water, the melting point of water is zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That's also the freezing point. That's also the temperature you're looking for, for if you're looking for it to perhaps be snowing. Okay, and then beyond when it's totally solid, and I remove heat, the temperature can go down again. Just as before, kinetic energy is changing on the diagonals. Temperature is going down, so kinetic energy is going down. Temperature is being constant on the flat lines, so kinetic energy is constant on those flat lines. Rather than kinetic energy changing, potential energy is changing. The energy is going to moving the particles um, closer together or forming more IMFs. Okay. Make sure you know which phase changes are endothermic, which are exothermic, and make sure you know the names associated with them. So the endothermic phase changes, as I had said before, if I'm just looking at my heating curve, let's say, the endothermic phase changes are the ones where I'm going up overall, solid to liquid, liquid to gas, solid to gas. The exothermic ones are the ones where overall, I could just look at it, are going down, gas to liquid, liquid to solid, gas to solid. But make sure you know the names associated with it. So fusion is another name for melting, that's solid to liquid. Vaporization or evaporation or boiling would be liquid to gas. Sublimation is when a solid changes directly into gas. And this happens with something like dry ice where you see these like bricks of what looks like ice and smoke coming off of them. It goes directly from solid to gas. And this can actually happen also with ice cubes in your freezer. That's why all of a sudden you have these ice cubes and then you don't have any. So there's conditions where a solid can change directly into a gas. Sublimation starts with an S, starts with a solid. These are all endothermic phase changes. They're going up the graph. Exothermic phase changes are releasing heat, and these are going down the graph. Freezing is liquid to solid. Condensation is gas to liquid. And deposition is going from gas directly to solid. Um, this is different than decomposition, which we learned in Chapter 9, which was a type of chemical reaction. This is a physical change going from gas to solid deposition. Okay. Take a moment and try the example and then check your work. Label the phases on the graph. Okay, um, So this would be a solid, this would be solid and liquid present, Okay, this would be liquid, and this would be liquid plus gas. Notice that sometimes your heating curve is cut off. Okay, So depending on the problem, they might not give you the full heating curve. Always read what's given to you because um, you might just be shown part of it. You could have been stopped here um, or I might have told you it started at liquid and this part would go away. So always read. You might not see the full heating curve. What's the melting point temperature? Melting is changing from solid to liquid. So if I go across and about estimate, I would say this is maybe about 55 degrees. You might estimate slightly differently. 
what is the boiling point? Boiling point would be liquid turning into gas, and if I go across and estimate, I would say maybe that's about 95 degrees. Indicate the line segments where potential energy is changing. Potential energy changes on the flat lines where you have a, con um, where you have a phase change. This is when the temperature is constant. So BC and DE would be potential energy changing. Kinetic energy changing is when I have my increase in slope, when I have my diagonal lines, that would be lines AB and CD. I'm getting these letters from these here. Potential energy is constant in the opposite places of where it was changing. So AB and CD, those would be the inclines, and kinetic energy is constant when temperature is constant, BC and DE. Temperature is constant, BC and DE. How long does it take, so notice time is on my x-axis, how long does it take to melt once the melting point is reached? So this is be very, it's very important to pay attention to the wording. How long does it take to melt once the melting point is reached? Okay, so from zero um, to about, I'd say, nine minutes or so, that's when the temperature is increasing to get to the melting point. So I'm not going to include those. When does it start melting? I'd say this is at about nine minutes, and you might estimate it slightly differently. Okay. When does it end melting? I'd say about 19 minutes. So the entire time to melt would be the length of this line, about nine minutes to about 19 minutes, I'd say. So I'd say about 10 minutes. Which point represents the first presence of a liquid? Okay, so this line is completely solid. Here is my first line that would have solid turning to liquid. So at point B, that's when it first starts melting. My first drop of liquid would be um, formed in my container. So I would say point B. When do I have full liquid and only liquid in my container? I'd see point C. That's when my last part of solid turns to liquid. Take a moment, try this next example, which is a cooling curve, answer the questions, and check your work. Okay, label the phases. So this is my cooling curve. This I have gas, then liquid and gas. Then I'd have liquid, then, lights, then liquid changing into solid, so both of those phases present, and then a solid. What's the freezing point temperature? That would be the solid and liquid line. If I go across and estimate, I'd say maybe 275 Kelvin. Kelvin is another... Um, unit of temperature. Uh, it's very similar to Celsius, but Celsius starts at um, zero is the melting point for water, essentially. And Kelvin is an absolute scale. You don't have any negative numbers, so they give zero to be the lowest possible temperature. Okay, what is the boiling point? That would be liquid and gas. Okay, and if I go across, 375. You might call it the condensation point or the boiling point. It's the exact same temperature, the just different direction. Indicate the line segments where potential energy is changing. That would be the flat line, so B and D. Kinetic energy is changing on the diagonal, so that would be A, C, and E. Only gas is present in A. Both liquid and solid are present in D. And there's a phase change in B and D. How long does it take to melt once the melting point is reached? Okay, so it starts melting at 20 minutes. It ends a little bit before 20 minutes. I'd say maybe 28 minutes. So I'd say in total it takes 8 minutes to melt. How long does it take to boil once the boiling point is reached? Okay, I'd say it starts, I don't know, maybe 4 minutes. And it ends, I don't know, maybe 9 minutes. So it takes about 5 minutes. What's the name of the phase change that occurs on line B? That is changing from liquid to gas, uh, from gas to liquid, excuse me, so that's condensation. And the name of the phase change on D is changing from liquid to solid, so that's freezing. Sometimes freezing is also called solidification.